Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. My name is Travis, and today I will be doing a persuasive speech, as you know. Okay. So why eat organically grown produce that is grown locally as opposed to commercially grown? What's the difference? Uh, show of hands, who, who would know even one simple difference between why you would want to eat one or the other? Good. We have, we have one person. We have three people. Great. Great. So I'm going to kind of lay out a few facts and I'm going to back up a little bit and talk about some of the things of the differences between how they grow the produce and what actually goes into it. And then I'll start kind of laying out why. So we'll give a little information here as to the science. When you talk about growing plants, you have to think about how that plant grows. One of the main places a plant gets its nutrients is from the soil. So soil is very important to how that plant grows. Within that soil, there's a thing called microorganisms. Now, microorganisms are basically things that a plant is able to get nutrients from the soil. It breaks down lots of things within the soil and basically helps feed it. As well as that plant, over the course of its life, will put about 27% of its weight back into the soil in the form of nutrients and vegetables and things like that to then continue this process along. And so you have water that comes down, you have microorganisms, and then you have one other thing with the sunlight, and that's going to be called an electrical charge. Okay. Now what happens, because I'm giving you a little bit of science, is the sun, because it's so powerful, it shoots down these things called photons that then get kind of broken up into little packets. And they're called paraphosphates and diphosphate. That's where it's incorrect. And what happens is when it goes into this into the soil, some of the rocks and the dirt will then, specifically rocks will absorb one of the electrical charges, which is it's a very magnetic type of field, into that rock. Okay, and that then stays within that area of the root structure and the soil. So it continues to keep a pseudo charge. The plant and the stem of it then has another charge to it. And so what ends up happening is you have a very circular model where the microorganisms can survive because of the electrical charge. And the plant has a different charge, so it kind of forms an open loop circuit. And it gathers some of that energy from the sun coming straight down. And so that's why the plant actually grows at a 90 degree angle to the ground. Okay? So just kind of a few little facts to that. Now microorganisms are extremely important to plant health. And what happens with commercial farming is what we do is we go through and we strip the plants out of the ground, not allowing that plant to then put its nutrients back into the soil. So then you're having less dense, rich nutrients dense soil. And so the soil doesn't have as much of those microorganisms and is not as healthy. By the year 1961, we had depleted over 70% of our topsoil available for us to grow plants within the U.S. And so now these companies are having to go outside into third world countries in order to grow a lot of our produce because we don't have as much top rich soil. So this, this whole thing then presents a big problem. Okay. Now we don't have very rich soil for our plants to grow up, right? Because now we're ripping the plants out that would normally dump stuff in. Our sun is still the same, but we don't have the same microorganisms available. And so what commercially grown people or the, the industries do is they take it and they load it up with fertilizer, okay? Because we need to offset and feed the plant somehow. And what happens is when you load this thing up with all this fertilizer, the plant basically is going like a, uh, like a homeless person. I'm going to take whatever I got. I'm not, it may not be the best source of nutrient and value for you, but I'm going to take it anyways because that's what they're. So you get plants that have become addicted to chemical fertilizers. Okay? And that chemical fertilizer then has parasites that attack those plants because it's basically Mother's Nature's garbage disposals. What then happens from there is this provides problems. Because now we have parasites that are attacking the plants that are caused from the soil from the fertilizer because we're not allowed to have those microorganisms to continue because we're ripping them out and our topsoil is all depleted. So what happens? What do we do? We take pesticides and we take herbicides and we dump it on the dirt to get rid of the parasites. Now the root structure is then sucking up that stuff also. So what ends up happening 
is you're taking a plant that is addicted chemically, you're taking a plant that's sucking up herbicides and pesticides, 85% of the soil is depleted from the microorganisms, so you're not getting the same nutrient density that you would, and it goes into your food. And then we end up having long-term health effects from eating this stuff that gets into the food. There's a funny thing that actually, did you know that sometimes they'll take things and they'll color certain apples and oranges so that you can have coloring? This makes no sense. Well, my apple just doesn't have the right look. It doesn't have everything. It looks like an apple, kind of, but it's not the same apples if it's organically grown. You notice that they wax them and they stack them in a way that's aesthetically appealing for our eye. It's not necessarily the most nutritious thing. And so, what do you what do you do when you're eating something that's synthetically grown with pesticides and herbicides because we've messed up the whole system? There are currently five companies that control 90% of the food source that we eat. Okay. Now this is a really scary thought if you think about it. And the reason that I say this is this: if you go back in time to the Roman Empire with conquest and taking on these large areas, what would they do? They would go to an area. They would start to conquer it, and they would go and they'd take salt, and they would salt the fields so that you couldn't grow any plants, making the people that lived in that region dependent upon them to have their food source. So who kind of controls the food kind of has the power. This makes perfect sense. So now we have five companies that control 90% of our food source. This is extremely scary. They also did a study where they showed, and this really drives me crazy, that dentists are like number two in suicide rates. Locally organic farmers are now number one in suicide rates. And the reason is because they can't compete with these large companies on cost. So everyone, no one goes organic because they go, whole foods, whole paycheck, I just can't do it, it's too expensive, it's way too expensive, blah, 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 blah. They don't get the idea that you have eight times more nutrient dense food in an organically grown apple than you have one that's been grown with I don't know, pesticides in there, and herbicides, and all this other junk. So now, you know, we need to look at trying to support our local organic farmers. We need to look at trying to pull people in and actually do things that are going to be better for our health. It's, um, it's, it's pretty scary to me. In 1945, and just kind of give you an idea of the effect that even all this stuff has on our crops, we use 2,000 pounds of pesticides and herbicides on our crops, right? Now by the year 2000, we have 2 billion pounds of pesticides and herbicides dumped on our crops. And did you know that our crop losses have doubled since we've done that? Doubled. And so what we're doing is we're eating neurogenic hormone-based things that attack your nervous system. Some of the things that kind of occur, I'm going to kind of pull these off the sheet here because of us eating these pesticides and herbicides is early onset, they've been shown long-term health effects, early onset Parkinson's, shortened attention spans, memory disorders, reduced coordination, reproductive problems for people who want to get pregnant, including miscarriages, reduced infant development, birth defects, depression, and cancer. So one might ask why we don't do something about it or why the educational system doesn't do something about it. And the number one reason that this doesn't occur is anytime someone looks at getting into this type of thing and decides they want to teach it in their curriculum, all the funding is coming from these companies. And as soon as that person says, hey, I'm interested in talking about this, which would reduce how much money they make, they pull the funding. And so you have to go to really extraneous sources to be able to find this information. Which to me, trust me, if you get on Google and you look it up, it takes you a while to find what you're looking for. And so, kind of a long story short, do things that are better for your health. You know, don't take in those things. I mean, we take supplements, we take multivitamins, we try to do the right thing, we try to exercise. So why not spend a few cents more and eat that organic apple, which is going to be nutritionally better for you and grown the way it should be, instead of eating something that's pumped full of stuff that you really don't need to be taking in. That is the end. Thank you very much.